For the perfect lover The kind of love we only seen in another I wasn't waiting for sunshine and unicorn I have nothing I've around And then you don't But all of a sudden you're the hero of my story I celebrate the love And all this to me glory I still remember the way this whole thing started out Walking down the city Feeling down and broken hearted But then I guess So I rose to a room A fool found collision On my way home I cut a corner Down we hit and crash The crash has been the first And hasn't been the last Cause it's a different kind of love From many other old school dating Is the boat Our explorers is a different kind of love And everyone is looking like we're crazy people Just escape from alone Sometimes I feel that you are from another place One of the most significant elements, in my opinion, that needs to be controlled in any filmmaking scenario is indeed the exposure. Hence, in everyday shooting, variable ND filters and matte boxes are usually one of my favorite and most widely used accessories. I've been trying out and recommending different filters and variable NDs from multiple brands for a while now. Tilta actually just released their Mirage, which is a uh, modular map box, it's pretty fun. I've been using this product for almost a month now, even though I've been pretty busy actually recently, had a bunch of shoots. Um, but here are some of my thoughts as an active user and who's, you know, actually used the map box for a while now. So generally, the VND filters on the market are, you know, circular VND filters such as this one from uh, from Nisi and, you know, Polo Pro that I've actually been using myself. I can't find my pocket. Uh, usually, map boxes are on the market and previously from Tilta, you know, are mainly um, only compatible with 4x5.65 and 4x4 IRND rectangular filters. Um, to the Mirage, on the other hand, is a map box that's actually compatible with variable ND filters. So if you order the VND kit, the kit not only includes this uh, pretty good design, solid design uh, Tilta uh, map box, but also a circular VND filter module that can actually be directly slided into the map box body. Then you can simply adjust the ND stops by adjusting the knob on the top. There are definitely some advantages to this product. One, it can be a lot more compatible than common circular filters as this Mirage um, fits with 95mm filter tray and you know 95mm uh, VND filters. So this one can fit on uh, numerous lens filter threads. Uh, you won't be needing to you know, get different sizes of circular filters. Um, you know, for instance, I got this one from Nisi, which is a, just a you know 67 mil for uh, my 24 mil G Master lens, and now I can't use it on any other lenses. So I gotta get more circular filters. But if you use that, you don't need to anymore. You can just put on adapter rings on you know different uh, cine lens. Or if you're using a 95 cine lens, you can just directly slide on the 95 mil Tilta Mirage onto your lens. Or if you're using any 140 mil cine lens, Tilta is actually going to release a 114 mil version of Mirage in the future. So it can surely be perfectly mounted onto, you know, both photo lenses with uh, adapter rings and directly onto, you know, any 95 mil or 140 mil cine lenses. Two, Mirage can be a lot more convenient than circular filters during actual shoots. You know, you can just directly detach the matte box and quickly attach on to any lens with the adapter ring. It is also fast to switch filters with the Mirage. Just pull you know, the quick release knob and you can pull out the, the filter and slide in another filter tray inside. Really simple. Three, when you compare it to the Mirage with most traditional cinema map boxes, 
or the old ones from Tilta. It's a last molar. Ah, so it's not like the RA map box we used, huh? <sighs> nope, not like that. But we'll get to that pretty soon. The filter size is also way smaller than the traditional rectangular filters. So this map box uses now, just like you know, I mentioned before, this new you know standard 95 mil circular filters from built by Vexis, uh, making Mirage a lot lighter and more convenient to use. But of course, there are other map boxes on the market that are also compatible with uh, VND filters. One similar product I believe we should definitely talk about is the Basecamp from Polo Pro, which is a really good brand and product as well. So you can also slide in VND modules into Basecamp and adjust the VND stops using the knob on the top. A really solid product. Another product I think that's relatable is the 138mm Cinema Mapbox VND filter from Tiffin. But the price and the size of you know uh, the necessary huge RE Cinema Map Box that's compatible with it is just you know massively different from Mirage's uh, price point for sure. So in comparison, I feel like Tilta Mirage has learned a lot actually from its competitor, the Polo Pro Basecamp uh, Map Box design, and improved on it. The most improvement I can see is actually on the application of the VND uh, filter itself. So the VND filter system uh, for the base camp consists of two different VND filters, two to five stops and six to nine stops. To the Mirage uses one VND filter that ranges from one stop to nine stop. The ability to use only one filter for such a wide range and not needing to you know, change your VND filter at all definitely makes shooting a lot more convenient. Most VND filters have one downside. When you set the VND to max stop and you're shooting outdoors under the sun using the wide lens, you will usually get some cross pattern shadows or vignette. Polo Pro Basecamp has it, Tiffin's VND has it, Tilted Mirage also cannot avoid it. That's why I did a detailed comparison between all these VND filters from different brands um, to test the cross pattern shadow effects when shooting with them on the Rakomodo with a 25mm DZO film uh, Vespid primes. Here are some of the test footage. So as we can see, when you set the VND to the maximum stop, depending on how you're facing the sun, you know, every filter will show some sort of cross pattern shadows. The size of the shadow does vary. When using Tita Mirage, I would suggest that, you know, the best practice to avoid this issue would be not to set it to the max max stop, of course. I usually set it to, you know, a bit one stop lower and this will usually help solve the issue. Um, using any lens longer than 35mm uh, should prevent you from encountering this issue as well. Mirage's advantage, however, among these filters is that it has hard stops built into the, uh, you know, the Mapbox VND filter itself. These hard stops help you annihilate the issue you might sometimes encounter while using other Mapbox VND filters. So if you ever rotate it above the max stop, your image will be completely covered by you know, a black cross pattern shadow or even a blue shadow in the base camp's case. The next test I did was on the color rendition of the VND filters. I set all of these filters in different stops in order to compare you know, the colors. Something to note is that I shot this comparison footage on a red Komodo and the white balance was set consistently on at a 5600 Kelvin for both outdoor and indoor scenes. I didn't do any post color grading, I just simply threw on a red 709 LUT and here are the footage.
So as we can see, in comparison, both Mirage's VND and Tiffin's Mapbox VND has a bit of a green tint. And both the Polar Pro's Mapbox VND and uh, Tiffin's Circular VND has a bit of a, a blue tint. It's really interesting. It depends on your personal preference, I guess. To be honest, I slightly nice myself lean towards you know the green tint as that's uh, also my color grading preference. I personally gravitate towards a more you could say you know a filmic look. Uh, Mirage's color also stays consistent when switching from one stop to nine stops. This can of course help to maintain the color consistency between you know your scenes. All right, so that was the testing of the VND module performance. Now I want to talk about perhaps another huge selling point of the Mirage map box. That is, it's a modular design map box. It has multiple configurations because you can you know take both the lid and the front hood um, off. You can also add on uh, many many accessories. The most significant one would definitely be. Um, this wireless uh, motor and a wireless remote. It's, it's really fun. It's really fun. The wireless motor is included in the VND Plus motor kit. It can be installed onto the VND knob and you will hence be able to adjust the ND stops wirelessly. It is a really, really useful product and can be helpful for you know many shooting scenarios. One, when you've already mounted your camera onto, say, a rig. For example, a, a car mount, a steady cam, or, you know, a float. So when it is quite hard to actually adjust the ND stops manually with your hand, you can easily adjust it wirelessly using, you know, the wireless external monitor. So now you not only need a wireless focus puller, but also a wireless VND puller. It can also be incorporated into storytelling filmmaking techniques. For example, when you're shooting you know, a long take scene that follows a character walking from a bright setting to a darker setting, it is now easy to control the exposure without changing your lens aperture simultaneously by changing the VND stops wirelessly. Another method which I actually learned from the Cinefate product video that is, while you are changing the ND stops live, you can also change the, the aperture at the same time. So the exposure of your image stays the same, but your character will become, you know, gradually become isolated in the image as the background gradually blurs out. You can actually use it to your storytelling's advantage, such as, you know, when your character learns something tragic or dramatic. This effect can let your audience directly experience the loneliness or the shock the character is feeling at this moment by, you know, gradually isolating the character away from the background. Of course, in order to achieve this specific effect, it will require a lot of practice to make sure that you can, you know, keep the exposure consistent by uh, changing the aperture and the, the ND stop at the same time. But hey, at least now Tilta has given us an actually a way to practice this on our own. So there is a pretty interesting method that I've tried and that you can also experiment is that, um, so you can first put your camera, so of course if you're using like a mirrorless camera, you can put your camera into shutter priority mode um, so that you can let your camera um, adjust the aperture um, automatically. And then you can just uh, first set the, the Mirage ND into a pretty uh, low, low stop. And then, you know, you can manually, slowly, slowly, gradually adjust it to a higher stop so that your camera will automatically, you know, enlarge the, the aperture of your lens. Then in this way, your image will appear that, you know, the background can gradually get um, blurrier and blurrier. Which is why I really like this product from Tilta because you know there aren't that many wirelessly controllable VND map boxes in the filmmaking market out there. The most popular for now perhaps being the Cinefate. However, just like the Tiffin map box VND mentioned before, the size and the price of Cinefate is just hugely different from the Mirage. Mirage being at this price point um, available able for us to try out so many you know advantageous uh, feature i believe that tilta is really doing a really good job here tilta also includes a nucleus nano adapter that allows you to mount their nucleus nano motor onto the vnd kit to use that to wirelessly control the nd stop instead so if you already own a nucleus nano from tilta you don't need to purchase this extra mirage motor or remote separately 
that can save you a bunch of money. Perhaps you still remember what I said about Tilta back in my float video. I said that Tilta once told me that their purpose is to bring these higher level filmmaking technologies to a more consumable level in order to help push the filmmaking industry to the next level. Which I do believe with the release of this Mirage product, Tilta has done it within the Madbox realm. The kit also comes with a 95mm filter tray that can fit um, all kinds of 95mm filters from Vaxis, including white pro mist filters, black pro mist filters, streak effect filters, etc. I always use black pro mist filters on my own. I think that the, you know, the pro mist filters from Vaxis are uh, pretty solid, since the benefit of these over Tiffin or Nisi filters is that you only need one to fit all of your you know, lenses. So even though the streak filters can indeed provide um, this anamorphic-like effect, it's pretty cool, I'll say, but you can actually still see some, you know, some of the patterns from the filter itself on your bokeh in your image uh, for sure, so beware of that. Other accessories also include such as this super ultra lightweight clamp-on uh, filter adapter so you can directly just clamp on the VND filter module onto it so that you can clamp the whole thing onto the front of your lens which is actually perhaps the most lightweight and also budget configuration for the Mirage VND filter system. Um, it is perfect for you know a gimbal setup actually. I'm also really excited for um, some new accessories such as a um, variable polarizer filter um, and some uh, expandable 4x5.65 filter tray that allows you to stack more you know, standard 4x5.65 filters on the front of the map box. My most favorite accessories definitely being um, the 95mm stackable filter tray which of course allows you to stack one more 95mm filter on the front of the, uh, the map box, meaning I can easily use the Mirage VND module and um, a Black Pro Mist uh, 95mm filter at the same time. I actually do believe that that might be my favorite and most useful head-on accessories of them all. But of course, there's still some space for you know nitpicking. I do have some suggestions that can perhaps you know make this product uh, potentially better. One, after attaching the, the wireless motor on, onto the map box itself, if I ever do want to manually change the ND stop, aka not using the wireless remote, I'll need to unscrew you know, these screws, um, unscrew the motor off first. Uh, but I just think that you know, it would be a bit more convenient if there's any way we can you know, still manually adjust the stops while the motor is attached. Two, the screens on the motor currently display, you know, the wireless information such as the channel and the motor's travel distance, um, same as the um, on the remote. But if it could show the ND stops uh, digitally, I think that would be that would be amazing. Three, I'm not sure if it is achievable, but if we could ever plug, say, this motor or um, the remote into the camera so that it would be able to use the camera's exposure information to automatically adjust the ND stops just like how the camera automatically adjusts the you know the 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 ISO the the aperture that would be incredibly cool but you know those are just some ideas for you Tilta so in conclusion i do believe that it is a pretty solid product from Tilta it's especially useful during you know, actual shooting scenarios when you put every, all the designs into consideration. I do believe Mirage has provided us a very consumer-friendly yet industry-like filmmaking experience. All right, thank you for watching. This is Nick and- this and... is <laughs> All right, well, whoa. Sorry. See you next time. Nope, actually see you at the beach. Oh yeah, in Malibu Beach. Mm -hmm.